Like Anthony Pratt, mining magnate Gina Reinhardt is also a big fan of President Trump's reforms. Mrs. Reinhardt pays more company tax than any other private business in Australia from her huge operations like the Roy Hill Mine. I think businesses need to speak up and be much more proactive towards explaining and driving the economic changes that should be made to welcome investment and create jobs in Australia. We should also encourage our politicians, who recently made positive statements towards cutting tape and taxes, like President Reagan and Prime Minister Thatcher did to kickstart their economies. Frankly, it should be obvious, the USA's present government has shown the way do two simple things, significantly cut government tape and cut taxes. With the expense of COVID and more and more billions being spent and added to our national debt, our Australian economy, other than part of the mining industry, is in despair. Over one million Australians are out of jobs and on welfare. And this will get worse if tape and tax aren't significantly cut. With the new National Cabinet in Australia giving state leaders more responsibility, Mrs Reinhardt is calling for the size and cost of government to be cut and for root and branch reform to create jobs. Now is the time to abolish payroll tax, a tax against employment, a tax that was supposed to be abolished when GST came in years ago. Now is the time to abolish penalties for the late payment of taxes when most businesses are already suffering from COVID, or at least incurring higher costs given COVID. This is an opportunity to provide an exciting future for our country. But it won't happen with just more talk of tax or tape cutting. Significant cuts need to happen. American investment is there to see at Roy Hill, where Mrs. Reinhardt's pink trains raising breast cancer awareness lace the landscape hauling iron ore for export. But she says much more could be done to attract further investment in both mining and agriculture. Mining is subject to excessive government tape and compliance burdens in Australia, which don't encourage investment or help to create jobs or revenue. Governments too often cave into the noisy anti-mining minority groups who don't care for those in the mining and related industries who depend on mining for their own and their family's living, or the next generation needing jobs. I hate to think how low our living standards in Australia would be without this essential mining industry. In the US, we have seen President Trump truly act to improve the regulatory environment for business, including mining. So before the pandemic hit, how successful would you rate the, the Trump policies? Yeah, I'd give him an A, A plus, and I'm on record for saying that. I mean, so, you know, what's really difficult about that is you've got to divorce yourself from the character and the person and look at the policies. And on a business basis, they're the best policies for business in the world. And jobs, job numbers before COVID hit? Through the roof, unemployment down to three. The, the magic threes, right? 3% unemployment, 3% uh, uh, wage growth, and 3% uh, GDP growth he attained. That hadn't been done since World War II. Before the COVID pandemic, the US had the best economy, I think, in its history. Record levels of investment, record highs for the share market, the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years, record numbers of people off welfare and food stamps, and very high business and consumer confidence. These are massive achievements. Unfortunately, the COVID pandemic which originated elsewhere, was beyond President Trump's control and has affected the US and world economic landscape. 